December 7th, 1941. A date that will live long in the minds of men as the crowning achievement of international treachery. America mobilizes for war because when Japan struck at Pearl Harbor, she struck at every man, woman, and child in America. Every resource of a great nation is called upon to help make America strong. Men and women everywhere become vital cogs in a vast war machine. Men work day and night to produce guns, planes, tanks, arms, and ammunition. Men and women are buying defense bonds and stamps by the millions. People in every walk of life are paying taxes in amounts never dreamed of before in America. Men and women are giving their time and money to help save their neighbors' lives during air raids. Car owners by the millions are cutting down speed, driving more carefully, cutting out quick starts and stops, saving tires, saving gasoline, saving oil. Hundreds of thousands of men are volunteering for war service. Millions more are being drafted. Everyone in his own way is doing his part to help America win. The vast resources of our worldwide organization are available for our country's use. These giant steel towers of our country's oil refineries are bulwarks of national defense. Strategically located from coast to coast, the Texas company's 21 refineries are ready for any emergency. 2,400 Texaco bulk plants from Maine to California distributed last year more than 3 billion gallons of oil and lubricants for Army, Navy, and civilian use. Months before America entered the war, many tankers normally engaged in domestic service were diverted to war uses. Yet gasoline and oil have also been readily available to the public. Six months before Pearl Harbor, a large number of new tankers were under construction or on contract. Barges and tank cars were being put to ever wider use. Miles of new pipelines were planned, built, and put into operation. And in an emergency, our army tanks can refuel in every city and town and on every highway. When needed, the oil industry's vast network of service stations can render vital military aid. Texaco's 45,000 dealers are part of America's strength. Overnight, every car became a national asset. With all available rubber and steel going into planes and tanks, prolonging the life of every car becomes a vital factor in helping America win. So every service station dealer takes his place as one of the important 18 men who back up every man in uniform. If any proof is needed that this war affects all of us, remember this. Four million people who usually buy new cars won't be able to buy them in 1942. 2,600,000 cars are going to be junked in 1942 unless we keep them rolling. The 40 million new tires that are usually sold every year as replacements cannot be sold this year. And nobody knows how much of the $600 million worth of parts and accessories sold every year will be obtainable this year. Yes, this is our war, all right, yours and mine. And we've got to do our bit, every man jack of us, to help make America strong. Every man who runs a service station can help win this war. How? Well, let Bill Goodwin tell you. When I read those headlines, believe me, I did a powerful lot of thinking. I guess we all did, trying to figure out what the war was going to do to us in our business. Then one day old Dan Huff came in to see me. Dan runs a service station too, and he was pretty thoroughly discouraged. Good morning, Dan. What's good about it? I told you we'd come to this. Yeah, it could be worse. I don't know how. Listen to that. That's what I mean. This war will put us all out of business. No cars? No tires, and pretty soon there'll be a shortage of gas and oil. And my son's in the army. Just left for camp. Yeah, I know. Both of my helpers were drafted. For Pete's sake, Bill, what are we going to do? I know what I'm going to do. People have got to have automobiles. They can't buy new ones. So I'm going to do my damnedest to keep every car that comes in this station running in top-notch condition. But we can't do that. What are we going to sell? What are we going to sell? I've still got my two hands, haven't I? I got my health. 
I can use my head, and I can still do a good day's work. I'm going to find out everything that every car needs to keep it in service. That's my contribution to this war. And let me tell you another thing. It's an opportunity. Eh, opportunity. Yes, an opportunity. An opportunity to give more and better service than I've ever given before. I've got my own war program, Dan, right here in this station. And this is it. Texaco Savior Car Service. One, Marfac 40-point lubrication service every 1,000 miles. Two, front wheel bearings every 5,000 miles. Three, battery service. Check water level every week. Check with hydrometer frequently. Wipe off clean and grease terminals when needed. Four, tire service. Inflate every week. Switch wheels and tires every 5,000 miles. Five, radiator service. Drain and flush. Seasonal. Check cooling system, fan belt, etc. Currently. Six, transmission and differential service. Check for a level every 1,000 miles. Seven, crankcase service. Change every 1,000 miles. Eight, spark plug service. Check every 5,000 miles. Nine, air cleaner service. Check every 3,000 miles. Ten, wash, wax, and polish service to preserve the good appearance of the car frequently. Oh, sure. Do that with every customer, and they'll think you're trying to barbershop them. People know they've got to keep their cars in good condition, and they're willing to listen when you tell them what their car needs. Ah, uh, nonsense. Nonsense. Listen, Dan, I've talked to people. I know what they're thinking. There's that factory worker who said to me, I work the swing shift in a defense factory. I gotta have a car to get back and forth to work. I'm a salesman. When this car and these tires wear out, I'm late. I don't know anything about automobiles, but my husband expects me to keep our car in good running condition. I volunteered for air raid defense. And if anything happens, I've got to be sure my car will get me there. And get me there fast. Believe me, Dan, nowadays people want you to help them keep their cars rolling. Stick around and I'll prove it. Good morning, sir. Fill her up with Sky Chief? No, regular will be all right. Yes, sir. All right. All right, sir. I'll just check the water. Yeah, that's all right, too. Your left front tire looks a little low. I'd better check it for you. Tires are precious these days, and you know only six pounds under inflation wastes 38% of the rubber. Is that so? I didn't know that. Yes, sir. If you'll pull your car over to the air pump, I'll get right at you. Had your front wheels off lately? No. Why? I was wondering if you've driven 5,000 miles since you had your front wheel bearings repacked. Gosh, I don't know. Fact is, I don't think they've ever been repacked. They should be. Factory recommends every 5,000 miles. Keeps the bearings from wearing out too fast. And nowadays, those things need attention, especially since nobody knows when we'll be able to buy new cars again. You see that slogan over there? Yeah. Care for your car, for your country. Hmm. Well, I suppose you're right, but I don't know. It'll only take a few minutes, and it'll help keep your car in good condition. Making cars last longer is what we've all got to do now, I guess. Yeah, I suppose it's got to be done sooner or later. Okay. Yes, sir. <laughs> Business as usual. Oh, no. It's a lot more than that, then. It's what I mean by opportunities. There's my 10-point war program at work. Most every car that comes in here, you can find something to fix that'll make them run longer. Oil changes, lubrication, battery, ignition system, cooling system. Excuse me. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Fill her up with Sky Chief? Uh, I guess so. Yes, sir. Now, did you know you have a loose connection here? No, I didn't. I thought it started kind of hard this morning. Well, then maybe I'd better check the battery, too. Battery checks okay, all the cells are up. I guess the hard starting was just on account of the loose connection. 
Now, while the hood is up, I'd better check the oil, too. Okay. It'll take a couple of quarts. But it's awfully thin and dirty. I wouldn't recommend putting in new oil with the old. Why not? Well, it needs a change. I wouldn't recommend it if it didn't need it because oil is ammunition nowadays, and we can't afford to waste it. Fresh oil will certainly help to make your car last longer. How long will it take? Oh, not long. I can get at it right away. All right. I haven't had a change for quite a while. Uh, how many miles is it since you changed the oil? I don't know exactly, but there's a card inside. Hmm. 3,000 miles. And it's more than 5,000 miles since you had a chassis lubrication. Uh, while you're here, a Marpag job wouldn't take much longer, and it sure needs it. Okay. Barber shopping, I call it. Imagine selling an oil change and a chassis lubrication at the same time. Listen, Dan. He needs this oil change. He needs this lubrication. And he needs this car. He'll need it for a good many years, maybe. And he knows it. And I need the work, and that makes us both happy. And when he comes back, I'm going to suggest rotating his tires. Look at that rubber. If he switches them around every 5,000 miles, he'll be safer and they'll all last longer. And that ain't barber shopping. That's facing facts. Well, who's going to help you do all this? Everybody's drafted. I know. I'll just have to work a little longer. Sally comes over and spells me a few hours. I don't like girls working around a station. Besides, she can't rotate tires or... No, but she can do plenty. She can post sales tickets and take care of reminder cards. You see the way I figure, our boys are out there defending their country. Your boy's in the Army, too. I'm too old to fight, but there's something I can do, something important, and I can do it right here. Maybe I can't shoot an anti-aircraft gun, but I can handle a grease gun, and every extra mile I can put into an automobile, every bit of rubber and gas and oil I can save is just one more shot at Hitler and the Japs. That's the spirit, Bill. Oh, hello, Dr. Bradley. My car ready? Yes, sir. Here's our Marfac job ticket. It tells just what I did on the job. There's a couple of extra things I made a note of. Your stoplight bulb was burned out. I put a new one in. Good. And uh, your spark plugs need cleaning. If I can pick up your car tomorrow for another hour... You sure can. And uh, thanks for watching these things for me. Just part of the job, Dr. Bradley. Say, uh, didn't I see you down at air raid practice the other night? Uh, yes, I'm on duty at a first aid station. Well, we can't let your car down. You need it too much. No. We can't let the cars down. People do need them too much. My boy, can't let him down either. Bill, you're right. I'm with you. People need their cars. They got to use them for a long time. And it's dealers like us that's got to keep them in good condition. Now you're talking. That's why it's up to us to check everything about every car that comes in. Better service than we ever gave before. We'll keep them rolling longer and help make America strong. And men, that's the big job facing the 45,000 Texaco dealers this year. Keeping cars and tires in service by closely checking every car helps in many important ways. First, it makes available to your government more rubber, gasoline, oil, steel, and other materials needed to win the war. Second, it helps car owners keep their cars on the road. And third, it helps you give your customers more and better service than you ever gave before. Offer a Texaco Save Your Car service to every customer and help him care for his car for his country. Remember, every car is a national asset. When you help prolong its life, you help America win. <laughs>